And we're going to show you some video that is really disturbing, distressful. This traffic stop in Hammond, Indiana, started because uh, the driver wasn't wearing her seatbelt. Why do you say somebody's not going to hurt you? People are getting shot by the police. Ah! Oh, ah! damn! Ah! What do we do about the inherent racism that we're seeing over and over and over again? Legally, the cops can ask you for ID, ask you to get out of the car. If you were with your family in that car, this would not have happened. Hey, listen. Period. That is just some of the reaction to the video you saw of a routine traffic stop that went horribly wrong. And now a Chicago area woman and her boyfriend are suing police. They say officers there used excessive force. This was last month when they broke their car window and fired a taser all the while with two children in the back seat. With me now, HLN law enforcement analyst Mike Brooks and legal analyst Joey Jackson to break this all down. Joey, I want to start with you as far as the legal element of this. The man's son in the back seat was videotaping this. Yes. We know what happened. 13 minutes pass. Police called for backup because the man, who says he felt threatened and scared by police, police say they felt threatened by him. He doesn't get out of the car. He doesn't provide them with identification, which he says he did not have. Do you think they have a case when it comes to police that we so often see they get the upper hand when it comes to these situations? Well, here's what happens. I I'm very troubled by what I saw in that video, clearly. Now, the law does provide, Lynn, that if you're asked to produce ID in that particular state, you must do it. And not doing it is a problem. It's a violation. However, it's a long leap from non-complying with the law, from having a window broken with a 14-year-old in the car and a seven-year-old in the car. In addition to that, there's the tasing element, Lynn. Once they break that window, they tase him. Now, police have a very difficult job, to be clear, and certainly we rely upon them to protect us and keep us safe. But you have to wonder, why was the family not getting out of the car? If you look at the whole video, you hear indications of, why are your guns drawn? There's a distrust. They don't want to get out because of recent events that have occurred, and they're concerned. And so, if you're the passenger and you ask for a white shirt, which is a supervisor, you're not engaged in any aggressive aggressive furtive, you know, furtive movements, as we call it, towards the police, why is there a need to break down the car? Interpersonal communication is very important. Speaking to people, reasoning with people, gaining their trust. Police do it a lot with hostage negotiation situations, etc. Why rush to break that window? Why rush to tase him? It's problematic. Why but rush it to break 13, that window? 13 minutes. So there was no rush went to initially. And you heard Jamal Jones, who was a passenger in the seat, ask for a white shirt. Well, at least one of the officers there was either a corporal or a sergeant couldn't see if it was two or three stripes but the person that broke the window out was a lieutenant and I guarantee you a lieutenant with a small department like Hammond Indiana is probably the watch commander and you know so that is the person who's in charge of all the other cops there on the scene now he asked you can hear again the woman was on the phone with 911 all this going 13 minutes long he said either you open the door or will open it for you because he was also in violation because ultimately he received a, a seatbelt violation so they were just trying to get ID from him but, so after, Joey, but after 13 minutes why not comply and that's really a, a become the issues. question of why not listen to police if they're asking you to do something you, you, have and you to. make the point that he didn't feel safe because guns were drawn right. and, and let me make a couple of points number one when you have a lieutenant who's obviously the supervisor on that scene engaging in that behavior well if your leader is engaging in behavior like that and is not using interpersonal skills interpersonal skills to me is not are you you going to open the window or are you going to open it bang That's but did you hear any yelling Time in out. the first 13 it's minutes a, it's not a matter of you didn't yelling. hear any at it's all. a matter of communicating sir i'm not here to harm you there is a law sir the law says that you need to comply if you don't we're going to have to escalate it not breaking the window well, that's Mike, what he I said either you, you open the you open the door or open it for Mike, so Mike, are you suggesting you going... that that justifies because he doesn't say he doesn't open the door that you after break the window and what happened after 13 minutes after third so what are you going to do they're going okay so, well, you know what? Let's just forget about it. You go on your way. He asked for no. a white shirt. That's a supervisor. In he was event. a lieutenant. He was there on the scene. Well, Joey he doesn't know that. So, therefore, you bring another you officer. You heard him tell her. That officer He's comes, right here. And that Mike, officer let me ask you something them. real quick. I don't quick, think because that this could question, be justified, period. The question that has 
My, my first instinct, why did he want to see identification of a passenger in the front seat? And a lot of people have said, hold on, a lot of people have said, they have the right to, they put out a statement Absolutely. saying, police have the right to ask anyone for identification. Joey will agree with you on that one. But would they have asked a man that was white for identification? And that's what some people have said, this would not have happened. How do we know? There man. was nothing race brought up at all in this situation. Not one time. Do you think this they would have asked for identification minutes. if I thought he that was you white. had great restraint because great restraint after what? 13 wait, minutes it's, it's, so let's what, let's let's right. i tell you what let's no. let's wait 13 so minutes when, and let's talk view, for 13 minutes and see you, how long in my that view, takes it's not the time you work with people in hostage situations or other instances you give people time i was a hostage negotiator i know all about in, that instances, and you know what in, in, 13 minutes that's it Lynn, they gave him an ultimatum Mike, either I, you open I, the door I, I or we will totally disagree you haven't answered my question